Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Bug Realms. I'm Bugman Sam. First of all, can I just say thank you for taking time out of your busy days to watch my channel. Um, it's slowly progressing in the way that I wanted it to, into the right direction, and that couldn't be done without you guys. Oh, you know, every comment I get, every subscriber I get, every like I get on a video, it truly means a lot to me. Now, first of all, I want to apologise. If I look a little bit rough or I sound a bit rough, I am quite hungover today. I don't want you to think my channel promotes drinking in any way, but I was celebrating. Uh, not only was it a belated birthday uh, drinks for a friend, but also I was celebrating something big. Now, I really, really want to tell you guys about this, but I'm keeping it secret to a future video. What I can tell you is it does relate to the BTS show in May, which I will be attending, providing work let me have it off. But it's more than just me attending. And uh, those that know me personally already know what it is. But for those that don't, just stay tuned. And in a later video, I will tell you what that is. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to do another sort of homemade project. I've been trying to think of something else I can do other than just decor. And financially, things aren't that brilliant right now. So I was looking around my house and I figured I've got loads of these live food tubs, you know, cricket tubs and things. And I thought, what could I make out of these? First of all, I was thinking of enclosures. There are a few little DIY enclosures you can do with these. But I thought, hmm, how about a micro mealworm farm? So that's what I've done. I've made a little mini mealworm farm. Now, those of you that are already into the hobby and have used mealworms for your exotic pets and things before, are probably wondering why would I want to make a mealworm farm so small? Why would I want to use these to make a mealworm farm? There's lots of budget ways of making one at a larger scale. Um, I'll get to that later on in the video. Now, those of you that don't know anything about the world of, of inverts or the world of exotic pets at all whatsoever, you may be wondering what, what's a mealworm? What's the purpose of a mealworm? So I'm going to go through that quickly with you now and then I'm going to show you how we make the mini mealworm farm and how it works. So these are mealworms here. So you can get them from your local pet shop. They're normally pretty cheap. You get them in these live food tubs like we had for what I said for crickets and things like that. Although they're not expensive, they're also very easy to farm. So if you keep certain exotic pets that will eat these, why not farm them yourself and you save yourself a little bit of money? So if I grab one here for you to have a look at, this is a mealworm. Now, a mealworm comes in a few stages. So this is the larval form. This is the larvae of a certain type of darkling beetle, which name I will put on the screen for you now. And they start off like this, although smaller, and the mealworms will grow in size until they're big enough to pupate. So when they pupate, they will look like this. Here we are. So this is the pupa. Um, so after the larval stage of being a mealworm, it will then turn into this. They don't really do a lot, they have a little wiggle. They don't need food, they don't need drink. They'll just stay in this form until they're ready to turn into a darkling beetle, which I will show you now. So here they are. These are old darkling beetles scurrying around. Now this is actually an old pot of mealworms that I had and I lost or misplaced should I say. And uh, I came across it the other day, completely forgetting I had it, or that I even lost it. And as you can see, a lot have already pupated and then already turned into beetles. Now these are going to be rehoused in our video, because the conditions are not great. You can still see the odd mealworm in there, and their food has run very, very short. Um, so we're going to sort out the enclosure now, uh, and then we'll place them in. So, first off, I already have one micro mealworm farm going, and we'll be setting up the other one now but just to show you this is what it will look like as an end result doesn't look like much does it but this is actually attached so i'm not sure how well you'll see but in here we have our beetles now they're just getting probably more a drink than food um, off of the carrot although they will eat it as well and it's lined with oats just cheap oats bottom is lined with just cheap oats. And I'm actually going to add a few more to this. This was like the remainder of the oats that I had left. I will make the substrate a bit deeper. Um, now, what I've actually done is this lid stays as normal. You can open it. It's already got the ventilation holes. But the bottom lid is actually attached. 
just open it there. You see, already attached to the top. Now I'll explain why as we go along with the other one. So, I'm not gonna actually create one on the camera for you today, guys, because it's actually really, really simple to do. But I've got an empty one here where I can do the explanation. So as I said before, you've got your top lid, will come off, and then the inside will look like this. So what I've done is the bottom of one of them, of your first one. This is just a, a, an empty normal one. This has already got a rectangular shape. Now they may not all have that, it doesn't really matter. I cut this rectangular shape out and then I got the lid of the second one and I cut the same rectangular shape but out of the lid. I then got, as you can see in here, there is some mesh. So I sandwiched between the lid of the bottom one and the bottom of the top one, remember there's a hole in both, sandwiched between a piece of mesh and hot glued it together. Now the reason I did it like that was so for the fact that this top one will be housing your darkling beetles in. And then the bottom one will where your eggs and your, your baby mealworms will be. And as they grow, the reason I've attached them is you won't really need to take this off apart from when you're cleaning out your beetles or providing them more oats or a supplement for water, is you can simply, with the lid still on this one, pull that one off. When your mealworms are a fair size there, you can move that tub to one side, that will be ready to go. And then you simply get another tub of the same sort, so the lid will still fit onto the second tub as well, and plonk it back on. So you don't have to make a whole new one when your tub's full. You can then sell that on or feed it to your, your exotic pets or whatever, get a new one, and plonk it straight back on and the farm will start again. So just a quick recap, we'll look like this in total, vents are already in the side because they're live food tubs, cut a rectangular hole in the bottom of this one, cut a rectangular hole in the lid of the next one, sandwich between a piece of mesh and you'll be able to see the marks on the hot glue gun there. Now why? Why have we got the mesh? So, what will happen is I'll show you with them all in there in a moment. The beetles, which are, will be fully developed, they'll be in here eating from oats, which we place in the bottom, and any bit of veg in that you can throw in there. I'll eat from them and then they'll lay. The eggs should drop through the mesh into the bottom. Now, if they don't, that doesn't matter because it's the natural instinct of a baby mealworm to burrow down. So apart from maybe if they got on the edges, they'll be under the substrate, they'll be burrowing down, and they'll fall through the hole in the mesh and land in the bottom. Of course, there's always gonna be the odd few that won't make it through that. It really doesn't matter too much. Now, we separate them because they can get eaten or they can also eat each other, which I've noticed. We don't want the darkling beetles to then start eating um, the baby mealworms. So they'll stay up here, the baby mealworms will progress down here. When they progress to a medium size, because they'll be very, very, very small at first, they, you, you won't notice them through the substrate. By the substrate, I mean the, the food, the oats. Um, so they'll, they'll land in here, they'll start growing. When they're a good size to be fed off, take this one off. That tub's gone that way because that's for feeding off. Get yourself a new tub, take the lid off that one because you won't need it and attach it on here and your farm is starting again. So we're gonna set one up now with the beetles in the top and the, the layers of oats. I will show you how we do that. And then why I chose this micro meal um, method um, over some of the bigger ones, although they're still cheap. I'll go through my reasonings why after we set it up. So here we have it. I'm gonna take the first lid off. And we're gonna to top this just with some cheap oats. Made a little bit of a mess already. All right, then we take it off. Oops. Forget how strong these lids can be sometimes. There we go. Now we've got the bottom one. Some's already fallen in, but that's fine. We'll put more oats on the bottom. 
hopefully when you do it, uh, you'll be less clumsy than me and make far less mess than I just have. So we've got them on the bottom. This now just gets left. We don't need to do anything with this until some mealworms are growing down there. So we'll put the lid back on. I'm just going to circle this round just to make it a bit more flat. You don't really need to. So now we're going to put in our beetles. First off, uh, I'm just going to pop the carrot in. It's got quite a lot of moisture to it, so you won't need to provide a water dish. As long as you can provide fresh vegetables like this, you'll get the moisture out of that. So here was our old tub. And let's just put some through. Oh, on your back. There you go. I skipped along there guys because it would have taken me a while to put them all in. But there we are, I've transferred the beetles across. And now in the other one I put a little hide in. I might find something that I can just put in this one. It's not necessary but they do quite like the dark. So then I'll pop the lid on. And just let them do their thing. So as I said, when they lay, it will drop down or the worms will climb down. And the mealworms will start forming under here and you can just swap the lid over as explained before. So there we have it. Uh, the only additional thing is you want to get yourself another tub. Well, I'm just going to use another cricket tub for now just to show you but I was going to get a smaller rounder tub to put in your pupae. So here's just a couple that I've pulled out. There are more in there, I'm going to go and sift through that in a minute. Like I said they don't need food, they don't need water you just need to keep them separate because they I have witnessed them actually get eaten before. Don't want that because we want them to turn into more beetles. So there we have it. So we're going to keep them in a separate tub. Uh, you want to keep a lid on that as well um, because when they pupate into the beetles, the beetles can climb quite well. And that's why we have it. So now I'm just going to discuss with you why I've chose this method over the larger method. So why is it that I wanted to make them this? size over something much bigger. Sorry about that, I got a bit close to the camera. So if you've watched other videos making mealworm farms, um, some use, you know, like the size of the predatory beetles that we had, the, the bigger enclosure. Sometimes they get a couple of large storage boxes, place them on the top with the same method, cut through, much bigger. You can get a lot more mealworms out of it. Some people use a three tier system, so they get those shelves of the plastic plastic shelving there's three and they put um, the beetles in the top cut the hole for the worms in the bottom they'll keep like the pupa or some even have massive racking systems where they keep different sizes of mealworm in each one well I'll tell you why I chose this method uh, personally for me I don't have a lot that will feed off the mealworms um, I do have things that will eat them but I don't really go through a tub that quickly so by doing this method I can just keep a tub for myself at a time and anything else I can pass on to friends who keep them or local pet shops or anything like that, sell them online. And I'll always still have a tub to myself. Now, the other reason being is I like the size. So for example, say you've got, um, oh, I don't know, a, vi a vivarium, something in, let's just say a leopard gecko or something, just for an example. You could put to the sides of these, I mean, they'll have a heat source in there and these will like a bit of warmth as well. So you could put one, say, to the side, like that. Then you could always put the other one on top. So they'll make a stacking system. So you could stack upwards. You could put them around a corner, like this. You could put them to the side. Now, for example, say, I don't know, we'll just give an example here. Your missus wants a new vase with some flowers in or something, and she goes, oh, I want to put that right there where you've got your mealworms. That's the only space in the house where it will look good. Well, if you had a big storage tub with there or a big three-tier system, you're going to have to move the whole thing into another room. Doing it with this method, like I said, you could move them from the side, pile them up on the top, have the vase next to it. You could have them going round it in a corner shape. You could take it out of the room completely, but you're more likely to find more space to have a stacking system like this with something with a smaller tub than you are a much larger storage box idea. Now, of course, 
those that go through absolutely hundreds upon hundreds of mealworms a week or whatever, having a big more industrial style, style scale would benefit you more, I'm not gonna lie. But I like my little method, and we're gonna see how it gets on, and I'll let you know, guys know how it gets on, and, and try it yourself at home, because if you're already buying these vented tubs, if you're already feeding things off with them, you're gonna have these spare. So that's cost you no money whatsoever. If you've got a hot glue gun, great. If not, you can pick them up for about a fiver. If you don't wanna spend anything at all, you could get a different kind of glue. Uh, mesh, you can pick up really, really cheap. Um, and you would need those for a larger scale one anyway, the glue gun and the mesh. But by doing this method, you haven't had to buy the storage boxes. You've got something smaller, more compact, something that can keep on stacking. So that is my reasons as why I've chose this method over some of the other methods you might find online. As I said, I can't pick a fault with them. I think they're fantastic. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that do much bigger ones. But like I said before, they're probably feeding on a much larger scale than I am, or they're probably wanting to sell on a large scale, uh, larger scale than I am. But if you're just a little hobbyist like me at home, building up your collection, why not stick to this method? Cheap, simple, easy, can stack, easy places to find from where to go. And um, plus, of course, you can keep your pupa wherever then as well. You could even stack that on the top if you wanted to, if you've got it in a same, similar tub, or you can put that somewhere else. So that's it anyway for today's video. Um, I hope you liked it, I enjoyed making it. Um, I've enjoyed making these little farms. Uh, the beetles seem so much happier now. You can see them all, see what I mean about them climbing? And they're getting some moisture there because as I said, they were left in that tub for ages by accident. And they do burrow down as well, as you can see. But they'll be too big to fall through the mesh. So thanks again for taking your time to watch my video. I know I said it at the start. But I mean, I can't even explain how much it means to me to get a, even just an extra view. I, I search, I check my YouTube every day. I only do a video a week, but I check it every single day. And, you know, I'm at work, for example, and I get myself a little notification saying so and so subscribed to your channel. And it just it just makes my day. I mean, I think I'm on currently 49 subscribers and just to get. Each one, like I said, I can't even explain. Each one means the world to me. I really want this channel to grow. This is something I absolutely love. And you know, you guys haven't even seen half of my collection yet. I just want to bring it out in time. Um, and there's always going to be new additions to, new unboxing, new rehousing, new things to make. If you've got any ideas of something you want to see, if you want me to make something in particular, let me know. If I can't afford to do get the materials for it straight away, I'll do it in a later video. If there's an invert you want me to keep, let me know. And as long as I can do my research and uh, get permission off the missus, I will get that for you and I will show you it. I will show you enclosures, I will show you the feeding of it. So please, feel free to give me a comment. Comments mean the same to me as a subscriber. If you're already subscribing, thank you very much. I love the fact when you're liking my videos as well. But keep posting, keep, keep some comments down there. I don't get very many comments. Um, so yeah, just please comment away. Let me know what you think of the videos. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Let me know what you want me to own, what you want me to make. I just, I really want this channel to work and I want to keep it going. And I have babbled on far too much now just to say goodbye. Um, but yeah, seriously guys, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.